All right, everyone, so here we are, end of January. Overall, it's been a pretty great month, finishing up about $55,000, but today's gonna be my second red day of the month, down 1,300. So, you know, made 10,000 yesterday, down 1,300 today. All things considered, it's not a big deal. I'm still certainly green on the week, green over the last few days, but today, I got caught in a couple false breakouts. I had two false breakouts and then one a decent winner, a $1,300 winner. So I went from down 2,600 to down 1,300. One of the things I try to tell myself when I'm in the red, I don't try to get myself all the way out of the red. I just try to maybe cut the loss in half, maybe reduce it a little bit. And that keeps me from, you know, trying to revenge trade and swing to get all the way out of the red when normally when you do that, you're gonna go further into the red. So, you know, small little trade here, and on that trade that I made $1,300 on, you know, I could have been more aggressive, but knowing I was already, you know, pretty deep in the red, I was like, well, you know, let, let's, I'll try, I'll take a trade on it. If it gets me a little less red, that's great. And then maybe I'll have another trade, another one, and those will get me back maybe to break even, but it's not gonna be all in one. It's gonna be a couple of small little scalps back up to, to break even. And today really only had one more trade, wasn't enough to get me back to break even, so. I'm gonna walk away, throw in the towel down 1300 bucks, but I'm not gonna sweat it. Be back at it first thing tomorrow. Guess what? New month, new goals, $40,000. That's the goal for the month of February. Same goal for the month of January, and I beat it, 55,000 bucks. So extra 15 grand in my pocket, I feel good about that. As usual, any questions, any comments, leave them below, and give me a shout out of what you traded today, what you made money on, and what you struggled with. All right, see you guys first thing tomorrow morning. All right, everyone. So we're gonna do a midday market recap here. It's a little after 11 and um, just not really feeling it today. We're not seeing a lot of momentum. You know, yesterday was such an awesome day. It made a little over $10,700. Today, you know, just not feeling it. Down 1,300 bucks. I don't mind giving back a little bit of profit after such a great day yesterday. And, you know, it's one of those things, um, you know, keeping losses small, relatively speaking, and live to trade another day you know maybe tomorrow we'll see something really hot today was kind of frustrating um the two setups that i took um were both false breakouts the the first two trades so this morning i actually had no watch list i really didn't see anything on the gap scanner that looked good um which is okay i mean yesterday sxtc that i made eleven thousand dollars on um, that one was not on the watch list. So sometimes we end up having great days and they're not based on the watch list. They're based on something that hits uh, one of these scanners uh, back here. Uh, but today, this gap scanner was just dead for me. You know, bigger float, bigger float, more expensive, more expensive, too cheap, bigger float, too cheap. You know, this one I, I was watching but didn't do anything. Uh, this is a gold company, bigger float. So, you know, basically there was nothing that looked good. And I kind of thought some people would be watching SXTC, but I felt like it was too risky. And, and on this one, I, I was wrong. I mean, it went from $6 all the way up to eight bucks today. It's a $2, you know, per share move. But the way I looked at it was yesterday on the daily chart, it really didn't hold its gains all that well. It came all the way back to basically the midpoint of $6. And continuation setups are good, typically when they hold around the 70, 80% mark, and then they can pretty easily curl and break the previous day's high, and then you have second day continuation. And of course, this one still have room on the daily chart back up towards 14. But the fact that it opened or closed at six and was opening around six, it just made me feel like you know this wasn't gonna really um, it didn't have a good chance of hitting 847 and that most likely any pops would be pretty heavily shorted uh, by traders just thinking it's going to be a short-term pop and then it's going to roll over. So, you know, right out of the gates, it squeezes from 580, 590 up to um, 644 and then up to 680, 692 and then it pulls back right here. You know, and this one was kind of, I was looking at it and I was like, man, you know, I, this really did move more than I thought it would. Maybe I should have been a little more aggressive on it, but, uh, you know, I, I sat on the sidelines and, 
you know, it, it's the way it goes. So on this one, I sat on the sidelines and I'm watching it on the one minute chart uh, right here. And at this point, the volume was maybe like 300,000 shares. It was a little on the light side. I saw this pullback and you can see this is a bull flag. This is a flag pattern. The first candle to make a new high was over 670. So I'm watching it, but I said to myself, you know what? And at this point, I, it's 945 and I hadn't taken a single trade yet. So I was thinking, well, you know, this isn't looking good. I need to take a trade I feel really, really confident on. I don't have a cushion yet. And I look and I say, the biggest volume candle of the day is red. And that's a warning sign. That's often an indicator that if you do get a breakout, it's gonna be a false breakout or it's gonna be a double top right here. And now that ended up not really being the case. It, despite this red candle, it went anyways. And so I had an order ready uh, right here and this candle broke at 954. Now at that time, as of 954, the high of this five minute candle um, was 666. So I had put in an order, SXTC here, um, I'd put in the order and typed it for 660 uh, or 670. I was watching it. I was thinking about anticipating it right here, but I wanted to wait for that five minute candle to close because then we would have one, one, two, three candles of pullback, which I thought would look a lot safer, help kind of get a little more space from that red candle. And then I would be buying right here, but it ended up breaking at 9.54, about 20 seconds before that five minute candle closed. And so instead of the trigger being 66 with a possible entry at 70, the trigger was the high of this candle, which was 70, you know, possible entry 70 to 75. And at that point I was just like, oh man, it's kind of, it's a little premature and it pops right up to 7.11, 40 cents. You know, 40 cent breakout there, 30 cent breakout. So, there I felt a little bit of FOMO. I watched it do this little one minute pullback. I considered it, but I was like, ah, oh, I just still don't know. The volume's not that great. And on this, in this case here, this little one minute pullback, it worked maybe if you scalped it, but it wasn't the most well-defined. Came up to 18, pulled back, came back up, boom, there it opens up and you can see squeezes up to a high of 785. So now at this point, um, Let's see, so this was right here. We had the high of 785. And when I took this trade, I'd actually, I was actually already read by 600 bucks on MBOT. I'll show you that one in a second. Um, but, so I got an MBOT, whatever. Um, SS, SXTC, I took my starter at 68 and added it, that doesn't, is that right? Okay. Um, what time was this? Um, yeah, I guess that's right. The high of this candle was 66. All right, so the first one minute candle to make a new high was 66. I bought it at 68 and 70, and my target was a retest of high of day, 85, and that we would break through high of day and go right to $8. So 6,000 shares, target was $8. And you can see it does a false breakout. It hits only 77 and then reverses. As it breaks this level here, I had to stop out. The low of this pullback was was actually 738, and I stopped out, as you can see, at 738 and 733. I got some slippage, and so on that trade, I lost like $2,000, you know, which, uh, such a bummer, um, you know. And so anyways, I stop out of it, and it's going sideways. This is the five minute chart, it's going sideways. I'm watching it here for the first five minute candle to make a new high. And I was like, no, I, I mean, I really still don't fully trust this one. I'm gonna let it pull back. And now it's starting to form what I would call the ABCD setup. So you've got um, the pullback, the pop, a little pullback, and then usually we break here. So uh, A, B, C, and then D is this leg up. So the high of this little pivot was 760. And so we go here, we go here. We go here and you can see how there it starts to pop up. So I got in this back in at 761 and added at 73 and 77. I sold half at 87, a little more at 90 because I was expecting an immediate break over 85 and an immediate break of $8, but we didn't get that, it hit only 95. So I started taking a little profit there 
And then I added back at 85 and 88 right here. I thought it was gonna uh, do this one minute micro pullback and break over eight. It didn't. So I'm in with 6,000 shares there and I stop out basically break even for most of that. I took a small loss on some of it. So, you know, total of $719 in the red on SXTC. I made back a little, I took a loss, made back more than half of it, which was good. Um, but it wasn't able to get over eight. Uh, I, I guess I kind of at that point thought, well, geez, you know what? This thing is strong. If it can get over eight, then next thing you know, 847, uh, who knows? Maybe this will really open up. But anyways, now it's below the VWAP, the volume weighted average price. It's fading a bit more uh, and I'm not going to stick around and, and wait for it. So whatever. Um, only, you know, whatever. I mean, real, realistically, I made $11,000 on this stock yesterday. I gave it a couple stabs today. I lost 700 bucks. It's not a big deal. I'm a little disappointed. I would rather be green. I was a little more conservative on it, you know, at the very beginning of the day. And then when it was finally proving that it was strong, I was like, okay, I'll, I guess I'll give it a stab. And then of course, you know, I'm the guy who loses money on it. So whatever, it's up 14%. I'm red on it, but managed the risk relatively well. I didn't go with 14, 15,000 share positions. I managed my risk. Those of you guys watching on Facebook, um, give me a shout out of what stocks uh, you guys were trading today. And I'll come back and, and look at those in the comments. Um, so anyways, that's SXTC MBOT. A quick $600 loss on that one. Again, not a huge loss, but um, on this one, this was actually a decent five minute setup. I mean, it wasn't, it really wasn't that bad. Uh, it squeezed up here from 840 all the way up to 940, pulling back. First five minute candle to make a new high was my entry. So I'm in it at 920, uh, 9, uh, only 3000 shares. I went small on this one. Um, uh, two orders here at 20 and 21. Um, I checked earlier to see if SS, SXTC was shortable. I didn't think it would be, but yeah, it wasn't. So that was rejected. But anyways, um, 1,500 shares, then doubled to 3,000, stopped out at nine. You know, this was a, a false breakout. It popped up to a high of 930 and then came right back down. So, you know, kind of a bummer to have two false breakouts kind of for me back to back, first this one on MBOT, then the one on SXTC, you know, but um, that's okay, it's 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 not the end of the world. And it, it's good for me not to be too compulsive about being green because that can make it so I'm not as aggressive as I should be. Um, so, you know, that's, it's okay to step up to the plate and take a little bit of risk knowing that, um, you know, when it works, you know, you get the big win. The you know, yesterday hitting, you know, a $10,771 day. That was awesome, you know, but here we go this week. I've got two red days. So down 1300 today, uh, 1.3,000, 1.3K. I'm going to put in my book here. Uh, it's the 21st day of the year. Uh, I'm not on a consecutive day hot streak right now. I'm not really going to think about it at all. I'm just going to kind of, you know, flip the calendar and it's going to be, um, uh, it's going to be February. Let me just give you my totals uh, on the month. Of course, as always, I'll post my broker statements on the website at the end of, um, well, probably it's the first week of the next month once I know exactly where I stand. So um, Thursday, let's see, minus um, 1304. All right, so looks like I'm going to finish this month uh, right around, uh, right around fifty-five thousand dollars, you know, plus or minus. I'll I'll get the statements and total it out. About half of that is going to be in the IRA account, and the other half has been in my main account, uh, which is good. So you know, trading in both accounts, getting some gains that are tax-free, but I can't spend it till I'm sixty years old, and then getting some gains here that I can you know spend whenever I want. So that's good. It's been a pretty um, Overall, pretty solid month, 55,000. Hey, the goal was 40, 40 grand. So I'm above goal and that's good. Uh, month of February, goal, 40 grand. 10,000 a month, 10,000 a week. Um, there may be some weeks that are a little ahead, some weeks that are a little behind. That's okay, not gonna sweat it, you know. This month, I made up some ground here in the last, um, well, especially with that $10,000 day yesterday um, and an $8,600 day on Friday. 
those definitely, you know, that's $18,000 in two days. And what's interesting is, you know, I'm looking at this calendar. Um, Friday, I made 8,600. Monday, I made only 400 bucks. Tuesday, I lost three grand. Wednesday, I made 10,000. Today, I'm down 1,300. So of the last five days, I've had two awesome days and three days that were kind of blah, you know, either red or slightly green and um, not super, super exciting. Mbot, yeah, as I talk about it, uh, it goes, goes back up, it looks like, where is this? Um, let's see. So yeah, this, um, so this was a, a, a flag pattern here. It, it broke below the VWAP, as you can see, it was below the VWAP here. It got back above it, reclaimed it, consolidation, and then squeezes through high of day. It's not, it doesn't have news. It's not a perfect daily chart. It is a former runner, but already had the first daily candle to make a new high after this big move. This is the type of thing that, you know, I'd look for on SXTC. Again, I don't know that we're really gonna see that today, but uh, yeah, no, this was a good good setup on MBOT, any of you guys who did um, trade it. All right, so anyways, um, so let me close this down, or let me just get a screenshot of my p and I'm going to um, post it um, and save that image. Okay, so let me get a screenshot here. All right, so $1,300 in the red. Transparency, it's important. So i show you the winners and the losers. The winners are more fun to talk about, but um, I know you guys can learn, um, you know, maybe even more from the losing trades. So it's important to cover those as well. Uh, so let's see. 131.19 daily gains. All right, so that's saved. Cool. So now I'm going to log out of this real quick. Um, let's see. Let me just hang on. We'll do one thing real quick. I just want to make sure. Load layout. I just made a little change on this layout called January. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to log into the sim. All right, so uh, as I told you guys, um, we're moving um, our students on to a new trading simulator uh, during the month of February, which is exciting. So you guys who have been um, really patient over the last um, couple weeks and, and months knowing that this was coming, uh, thank you. This is something that uh, you've, I'm sure, been looking forward to. So um, what we're doing is uh, all new students who join us um, in February, whether you join the, um, the Warrior Starter, the Warrior Pro, or you just purchase the simulator on the website, uh, you're going to go automatically into the new trading sim. Uh, all new students, that'll be, uh, I believe, as of the end of day tomorrow. Um, so officially probably as of February 2nd. So you'll go into the new trading sim and um, all of our existing students, we're gonna be migrating you over uh, to this new trading sim, starting first with Inner Circle students, then with Warrior Pro one year students, Warrior Pro payment plan students, Warrior Starter students, you know, right down the line. So, um, you know, with this sim, you're gonna be able to literally be trading on the same exact software that I use every single day with real money at light speed. So if you can prove you can be profitable on this platform, you know, the difference between trading real money and SIM, literally the only difference is your trades are going to the exchange instead of going to our uh, little virtual simulator uh, exchange. You know, I mean, if you, it's the pressing the buttons, everything is exactly the same, all right? So, um, yeah, so uh, the reason we're not moving all of the existing students first is because uh, the easiest thing for us to do is flip the switch so all new customers go onto this sim. We don't want to keep adding new customers to the old one. So the easiest thing to do is just put the new, everyone that's new, they're going to go right into this. Now, once we have, um, you know, whatever, that first, uh, those first students are going in, at that same time, we're going to move our first group of existing students over to this. So we'll be prioritizing based on, you know, your membership. So inner circle students are first. Um, and yeah, it's, that's, that's the order thing. Some of you guys have already been piloting this, uh, those of you who volunteered, but inner circle first and then warrior pro annual and down the line until we get everyone moved over. The goal is to have everyone moved over by the end of the month. All right. So, um, 
Yeah, so all new students as of, uh, I think it'll be officially February 2nd. So I can, you know, whatever. In this SQ, shift one, I'm in. Shift two, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. That's how fast you'll, you guys will be able to trade. These are the same hotkeys that I use with real money. You can see how quickly you can be making or losing money. That's pretty fast, right? Those of you guys who've been wanting to trade fast, you'll be able to trade really fast. So that'll be a lot of fun. So, you know, SXTC, something like that, you see it popping up, you know, you want to jump in at seven, take some profit, put an order, you know, on the ass, try to sell some into strength. You can do all of that, trade it just the way, uh, same, same as I'm trading it pretty much. So prove you can be profitable in the sim. And then all you got to do is um, you'll have uh, with whichever broker you use, you'll have uh, like with Lightspeed, I have two versions of the software. I have one that's a sim and then I have another one that's my Lightspeed version. So if you use CMEG, you'll have one version that's the sim. So you'll open that when you want to trade in the sim. And then you'll have the other version that's the CMEG, which is real money. But beyond you know that, they're the same. The things that you have to change uh, would be when you go into uh, your hotkeys, you'd have to make sure your um, you know account number is uh, correct and that your destination is correct because different you know different brokers will have different ECNs and things like that. But otherwise, everything is the same, and you can change your hotkeys. You, I'm using Shift One. Maybe you want to use F1. Use F1. It's whatever you want. You can make this however you like it, and then you can just save your layout and use that same layout for both real money and sim. All right, so um, you know you can see the charts here. These are, um, I would say, an improvement over um, you know what what most of you guys have right now. Um, I want to work with Sterling to try to get these charts even better. Um, so some of you guys will probably still using use TC two thousand or eSignal for your charting, and that's okay. But um, yeah, so you know you can see they're 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 good. I don't know if they're exactly everything that I would want them to be, but we'll work on that uh, once we get everyone on here. All right, so um, yeah, so anyways, those are closed out. All right, so that's it. I'm gonna close that down. I'm gonna switch gears. I've got a couple things that I need to get done here today, so I will be um, getting some work done, and I'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. We'll try to finish up the week strong. End of the week. Friday, also the first day of the new month. Not a day to swing for the fences, not a day to try to hit a home run, just a day to try to be green, make a little money, go into the weekend feeling good. All right, so that's it for me. I'll see you guys back at it first thing tomorrow morning. Bye, everyone. If you're still watching, you must have really enjoyed that video. So why not subscribe and get email alerts anytime I upload new content? Remember, when you subscribe, you become a member of the Warrior Trading family.